first, thank you for taking professional services. Thank you for the things you've done with it. Um, just want to kind of ask, you know, for those of you who weren't on part of the interview, maybe you can kind of give everyone a background kind of where you came from. So I have been in the IT industry for over 20 years. I've done a lot in a number of different business verticals, but I did spend a lot of time in, in the pharmaceutical space at a very large uh, pharma company. I did governance there to put a whole uh, validation and IT mm -hmm. governance plan in place for them. And that's where I got a lot of my background from. I've been doing validation and governance type jobs for quite some time. And the, it was an interesting dynamic because um, when you generally learn about validation, mm -hmm. you go to validation classes. But I tried to look at it from a different perspective and I went to audit classes instead. I went and, I went and learned as though I was an auditor. And so that actually gave me insight into the best practices for how to avoid the pitfalls of not giving yourself a good validation plan, not, not looking at compliance the way you should, because you know then what the auditors are going to look for. So, and that's some of the things that I've actually taught my team as well. I really like the fact that you're very pragmatic. I think you're, 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 you didn't, um, every process you described, it was, it was based on, on experience. So with that, since you mentioned your team, maybe you can kind of give us a background on how you've structured the professional services team. So uh, the way that we are organized at this point in time, we have a team of people who do the initial, take you basically, take you from start to finish implementation. Those are our project managers, they're technical project managers, so they don't just do a project plan for you and make sure you're meeting dates and following a schedule. What they really do is understand the system as well. Okay. They can configure the system, they can tell you about it, they can explain what it needs to do for you. They understand your serial number recipes, they understand how your CMOs are going to actually be able to be configured in the system. Um, we also have a team of people who specialize in validation and testing. They are a group of people who are under that are um, geared toward looking at your operational qualification, mm -hmm. your your um, you know, uh, your the uh, ability to test your programs the way it needs to, and make sure that we've done the serialization the way it needs to be for you. Mm -hmm. And they give you the evidence for that control so that you have it, you understand what you're supposed to get from it when we do okay. the validation. We also have a team of people who are dedicated to being your integration partners. So as we move beyond implementing the software and start looking at all your partner connections, we've got individuals who can actually uh, look at your partner connections, understand what has to be done, and understand how it folds into the overall architecture that we've designed for you. Okay. We've done this hundreds of times already. One of the things that you've done really different that, that, that is you've leveraged a global team, right? So what, when the U.S. finishes its job, you can actually turn over to a different team Absolutely. And, and kind of, to continue uh, the work uh, while others are, while the right. U.S. is busy sleeping. Um, how does that process work? What, what was some of the thought process in putting that together? In order for us to be able to work with a variety of different countries, a variety of different um, groups, because your, while your manufacturing plant may be here, your manufacturing organization may be here in the States, you're using vendors that are offshore, you're using vendors that are in other countries to make your, transact, your, um, your trading partner connections. So we needed to make sure that we had an organization that can actually work in those different time zones. So what I have is I have a team of people here, I have a team of people who are offshore, and I have folks in, in both Europe and India in order to, to meet those needs. Okay. What we do is we can start in one place and continue to work. We don't assign just a person to you, we assign a group of people so that when work is stopping in one place, we can continue working oh. in a different time zone. So it actually benefits everyone that way. When you finish an engagement, what, what's, or actually when you start an engagement, what are the two things you want the customer to know about your team? <laughs> um, I want them to recognize that we have a tremendous amount of integrity in what we do and we are there for the long haul. My team and our RFXL group as a whole, the organization as a whole, we are a company that, we're here for the long haul. There is, there is nothing, more, um, nothing more appealing 
to be an IT person than to know, as in an organization, than to know that when I install this software, you're not just going to run away from me. Mm -hmm. um, when I was in the role as a in a company, I would look for organizations that I knew were going to be there to help me. Yep. That were going to be there after the installation, and that's the feeling that you get when you're working with RFXL. So that's a good thing. I think it's um, comforting to know that you're going to have a group of people who are there to partner with you, not just to give you a software installation and run away. So let me ask, since you brought that, because um, both you and I can't, we we start our career in IT, right? So. How does that make it, how does that shape the way you approach customers? Because you, you came from IT and you didn't no. come straight from consulting. No, actually it gives me a, it gives me a vantage point because I know when I was in a role in an organization and I was looking to hire companies, it was difficult to find ind individual companies and people that were going to work with you. And a lot of times they would give you, they would give you people who didn't understand your industry. And especially in the pharmaceutical space, there are things that are very important to the pharma companies that, from a validation, from a qualification standpoint, that resonate when you talk to my team. We understand it, we know what to do with it, and we understand what it means to you to get it right. I think the biggest challenge that we've had over the last two years is actually going into an organization and um, while they have these business relationships with all their trading partners, mm -hmm. a lot of times they're not recognizing who, who's the owner of that relationship, what that relationship is actually based on. If are you selling to that organization? Are you um, are you are you manufacturing for them? Are you selling it to them? Is it a trade? And that is all going to play into the serialization portion of this because understanding how that relationship is built and understanding where the ownership is, is part and parcel to being able to install the connection correctly from a serialization standpoint, because you have to know who's going to own the serial numbers, who's going to be responsible for tracking them, and who would be accountable to the auditors or the, the FDA when they came in. So let me ask then, um, so if the, ch so let me make sure, so the challenge is, is um, if I understand correctly, it's, it's, um, understand kind of how the, the multiple positions the company plays. The multiple, the, the various hats that a company can yeah. wear. You can have a manufacturer and they could manufacture for themselves and sell it. They can manufacture okay. for someone else and, and be a service. And a lot of times what you find is that um, what they believe is ownership is actually a service that they're providing to another company. And so once you start digging in underneath all of those partner connections, you begin to realize where those relationships really are and how they're structured. And that will help us understand how we need to configure your system. Okay. When, when we go out and we look at an organization, we go into a pharmaceutical company, whether they are a CMO or a repackager or an actual manufacturer or brand owner, um, we go in and part of that, that kickoff that we do is to actually understand what it means to do business in your shop. We go in, we talk about those different scenarios that you have and we make sure that we understand them, we can document them, we put the workflows together mm -hmm. and when we lay them out in front of you, then it begins to resonate in terms of what the work is supposed to look like for us. For the kickoff throws, uh, is it something we just say, this is the kickoff, or can you customize a kickoff? How are the kickoff structured? Do they you? are structured so that we tailor them to the needs of the organization that we're going into. Every one of the organizations that we that we are actually working with, they depending on where they are in their serialization program. Okay. Some people know a lot because they've been working for a long time, they understand it, they're in the supply chain, they're the ones that are running it, okay. so they have a good background. Others may not be involved, maybe superficially or on the outskirts of it. They've heard about serialization, what it is to do. And so we may have to spend a little bit more time bringing them up to speed. But we tailor those discussions so they could be anywhere from a day, where we're in in the morning and we're out again at, at the end of the day. Okay. Or it could be up to two and a half days, depending on what we need to cover and how big the, you know, the, the, um, how many partners they have, how much right. relationship there is, and what their model, their business model is, because in some cases you have a brand owner who is a manufacturer for other people who hires other manufacturers. So it gets to be complicated sometimes. I know, uh, I know we've been involved in a number of, or you've been involved in a number of competitive wins where we've gone into either replace systems that um, 
uh, our our customers just they didn't like they, they they went with one one provider and for whatever reason it didn't work. Uh, we've come in and, and kind of replaced that, but maybe you can describe for us kind of the process, right? So it's, it's one to start a new implementation. There's one process for that, but if you've already got an imp implementation that started, what do you have to do different? And actually, there's not a lot between having someone who is already down a road with an organization versus what we are going to come in and do fresh. Um, we have a good understanding of pretty much all of the other um, you know, level four vendors out there, the serialization partners that are out there. We've been working with all of them for two years now. Mm -hmm. And in some cases, I think I can very safely say my team probably knows their software as, better, as, as well as we know our own because we work with them on a daily basis. And so when we go in to actually transition, um, we already understand what they're dealing with in their, mm -hmm. in their software and we can take those and actually transition that into ours directly. Um, so it, it's a matter of, under, again, still understanding the business scenarios that we need to pick up. And if we're already working with some of them, we probably already know what it is because we're either on the receiving end or the sending end of those relationships. So it actually, um, it, it's, a, it's a picture that we already know 50% of, right, at right. least. And so it makes it a fairly easy transition. And we've done them a number of times already fairly successfully. So. When you do this, Rose, uh, do you come in with, uh, do you start with a clean slate? Do you come in with uh, kind of, st what structures you go in with? We do not have to go in cold to any of the locations. By this point in time, because we've been doing this for so many, so many implementations already, we have a standard set of documentation that we're using. We have templates. We have a user, a set of user requirements that are well defined for the industry. It actually works. We can, at the kickoff meeting, we're already bringing you a, uh, a development system that looks like mm -hmm. your system. We get you signed in, you'll already have access to it, and you'll see your products in so, there. So, Rose, let me ask, because I know when we, when, I, when we started this one, uh, we weren't, so you're saying at the kickoff, you have a running system configured Absolutely. based on some calls with the customer. So based you can get start off A something. couple of initial calls with the customers and research that we do in the background for them from a product standpoint. Give me a few pieces of information and I can get you a development system already up and running. And it will have transactions in it with some kind of um, test products so that you can see the events, you can see the commissions, the aggregation, the ship, the decommissions, um, all the various uh, conditions that you would see in a normal situation that you would be running your business on. So we come in there on, on the first day of kickoff with that, with that development system already ready for you. We have recipes already built in there for the serialization. We have a variety of different things that early on, all the companies were doing, trying to manually configure all of that and do that on the fly, and some of them still are. At this stage, we don't have to worry about that because it's all built. And then on top of that, we've got all of the validation documentation already prepped. And so we're building based on your specific configuration, mm -hmm. but the, the URS, the FS, the config spec, all of those are template, and we've got a standard set of test cases that we run through almost 600 different steps that we actually execute for you. Yeah. So um, it's it's a nice package to, to actually walk in and be able to show individuals that, that half of the documentation is already going to be in their hands the first week.